Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Tatting video series. Today I'm going to teach you a technique called block tatting. Now block tatting is what they use to make squares, triangles, uh, little blocks of tatting just like the name implies. And it's a simple technique but instructions can be deceiving and confusing. So I'm here today going to take the confusion out for you. Now what I'm using today is Aunt Lydia's size 10 crochet cotton and I've used the lavender and the dark purple so that you can see how the block tatting works. Now when you're doing block tatting you can use solid color, you can use variegated, you can use any color you want but until you learn the technique my advice is two different colors. Okay? Now you will also need a paper clip and a crochet hook. Now if you've got a shuttle that has a crochet hook on the end, great. It'll help you pull your picots through. But if you don't, get a crochet hook. The uh, shuttles that have the pick, the pointy pick on the end, what you will find is you're going to stretch those picots out and you're going to have gaps in your blocks. You don't want that. Okay, that's a bad thing. So, get a crochet hook and I'm going to show you how to use your crochet hook to get a precise measure measurement on your pico so you don't get the gap. Okay, we're going to use our crochet hook as a pico gauge. Now, if you have a crochet hook on your shuttle, like the Moonlight shuttles, try to get a crochet hook that is the same size. Okay? You don't want two different sized crochet hooks. Alright? So I have one. Let me get it over here. Let me see. I know I own one of those. Too big. Let's try this again. All right, we've got one. The dimensions on this is about the same, okay? So you're not going to get much deviation, all right? Um, depending on the size thread you're using depends on your crochet hook, basically. But if you're going to use the hook on here to pull your picots through, get a crochet hook that matches this one, all right? Now, here we go. The first thing we're going to do is take our two colors of thread and tie a knot in them. Alright? The second thing we're going to do is take our paper clip and we're going to put it on shuttle 2 thread or our ball thread. Now if your second color is off the ball, shuttle 2 would be your ball thread. Alright? Now, run that paper clip like you're clipping papers. Okay? Right up over our thread and then it's connected. You're going to pull that cro uh, paper clip down to our knot. Now we're going to wrap our hand, okay, with our thread for a chain. Because that's all block tatting is, is chains. Okay? Now, this method that we're using is Jane Eberall's. She simplified the block tatting technique. And it's a wonderful technique. I mean, it takes the work out of block tatting. And block tatting can add new dimensions to all tatting. Okay, so if you want to add little blocks of color in your tatting, block tatting is the way to go. Okay, so let's get on with it. Now we have our paper clip. It's in place. It's down next to our little knot. Now we're going to do five double stitches. Alright, so we go one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we got our five double stitches in. Now you don't remove the paper clip yet. Just slide that puppy on down out of our way. Alright, double check. Oh, we've got the second half of that stitch. We want that in. Okay, so let's count our stitches off. We got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm, again, using Aunt Lydia's. And as you can see, this looks like it's a pico there. It's not. 
Aunt Lydia's is a three-ply thread, so you're going to get little humpties in it. So watch for that. Don't think that that's a Pico if it's not a Pico. All right? Fair warning. I warned you. Okay? Now, the second half of that, we are going to go back this way without turning our work. Okay? To do that, and to get the stitches to lay right, we're going to do what they call reverse order of double stitches or rods. It's also called front side, back side. It's also called front side. Okay? And what that boils down to is all your stitches will be facing forward. It's a lot neater. Okay? So, here we go. What you're going to do is the second half of that stitch, but you're not going to flip it. Okay? Leave this tight and pull that stitch over. Watch what I'm doing. Okay? Now do the second half of that stitch, which would be the first half of a double stitch. Do not flip. Pull it over. You see that? You watching it? All right. We've got one stitch in. Now we want to put a pico in. Okay? Now there are pico goddesses out there. They can say, oh, okay, I want a very small pico, and this is the size I want, and get it right every time. Newsflash, I'm not one of them, okay? And the tatting uh, pico gauges that you get from Handy Hands, you can't get as small a pico as you need, okay? So here's our little trick. I told you I was going to show you how to use a crochet hook as a pico gauge to get the precise dimension you need on your pico. Well, guess what? There's our hook end. It's going to lay down into our tatting as if it's a pico gauge. Okay, you see that? See how I've got it laid? That's our pico gauge. Now we're going to do the second half of the double stitch without flipping and pull it up snug to that crochet hook. Hold it in place and do the second half of that double stitch without flipping. Okay? Now, that you've done that, you can take your crochet hook out. Okay? And then slide your stitches down to close that pico in. And it's there. You can barely notice it, but it's there. Okay? Now we're going to do the last remaining stitches, which is four double stitches. This one is our turning double stitch, this first one. Okay, so let's continue on. That's two, whoops, we flipped. See what I mean? When you have two colors, you can see if you flipped. Until you learn the technique, use two colors. Because about the time you get used to not flipping your stitches, you're moving on to another element. Okay, so just food for thought. All right. Now let's do this. We don't want to flip that stitch. We're just sliding it down or wrapping our stitches. That's what this is called, wrapping your stitches. And we've got two stitches after the pico. We need three more. So that's one. We flipped. Don't flip, flip, flip. Okay. There's the other half of that one. Don't flip. Two. three. And we have a total of five double stitches. And if you'll look at this, these five are facing this way and these five facing that way. Okay? Now you want to pull this tight into shape. So you're going to grab shuttle two thread and pull it tight. Tighten up your stitches. Now, here comes the fun part. Alright? What we're going to do is lay this over, watch me, like that, right on top. Now we're going to remove this paper clip. Okay? So let's take our paper clip off. Gently, you do not want to lose that pico. Okay? There you go. Now guess where you're going to join that pico. Alright? And your thread's going to get fiddly. Hold on to it. It's going to be like a buck and bronco, as they say. Alright. 
stick your little crochet hook down in there, you grab that thread, pull it up through your pico. After you get it pulled up, you run your shuttle through it. Okay, now you want to pull it back down to create a lock join, right? So we're doing, we're using the core thread. Anytime you make a join with your core thread, you're making a lock join. Okay, and that pulls everything into place. All right, now, here we go. We're going back the other direction. Let me get my fingers and all that good garb out of the way. We're gonna take it and we're gonna go back this way. And the color is going to be this dark purple. That's how you're gonna know you're doing it right. All right, pull that lock join tight. And let's go on and continue tatting. We're going to do one double stitch that brings you up. Okay. And again, we're going to do our little teeny, very small baby pico. Grab our crochet hook, put it in place like a pico gauge. Pull that thread down to it. Take and pull in that second half of that double stitch. Then remove our crochet hook. Okay, doesn't that make those very small picos easier? Okay, you see that? There it is. It's sitting right there, but you can barely tell that that's a pico. That's what I say. When you're using Aunt Lydia's, watch what you're doing. Okay, now we've got one, two, three, four. You should have five double stitches there. One, two, three, four, five. And then our very small pico. And then the one that came up. Okay, you see that? Let's make sure. Yep, there it is. There's the one where we stepped up. Okay, our little baby pico. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now, here we go. Pull that chain tight with our core thread, lay it over, come back across. I know my fingers are in the way, there's nothing I can do about it. This smaller thread, they tend to get in the way, got big fingers. Alright, now you found your pico that you left here, okay, you see that? You're gonna go through and you're gonna grab that core thread. If you have a problem because it's flippy or whatever, pull it down into where you need it to go. Okay. Pull it up. Now watch what I'm doing here. I'm going to pull that, line it up, pull it straight up. Now, shuttle two is going to go through that loop. We're going to create a lock join on this side with shuttle two. Okay, pull that. Here we go. Lay it down. That way everything blends like it's supposed to. Take your time, because once you get it in, there is no removing it without tearing up your thread. Okay? That is Block Tatting 101. Can you see the two different colors? Now, to go back, same deal. Wrap our hand. We're going to wrap the stitches, do rods, reverse order of double stitches, front side, back side, or front side tatting, whichever you want to call it. Okay, there's no universal language for tatters. Alright, so we're going to start with second half of the double stitch, first half. Don't you flip. Okay? See that? There you go. Now you're going to put a very small pico in. Remember the crochet hook trick. Lay it in. Second half. And we flipped it because the dark purple's on top. We don't want that. out. Try that again. Now do this. First half. 
first half of that double stitch. Pull our crochet hook out. Slide it down. Our pico is in. We're going to do four more of those puppies. Do not flip one. Do not flip two. Do not flip three. And do not flip four. Okay? Just keep saying to yourself, do not flip. And you'll get it right. Okay? So after the pico, we got one, two, three, four. We have one more to do. That will give us our five double stitches. Your count of five starts after the pico because the first double stitch you do is the turning double stitch. Now, as before, pull it tight, lay it over, and connect it to that pico. That baby, baby pico we got right there. And it may take some doings. You need to pull it up a little more to locate it. Do so. Run your hook through. Grab that core thread. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Run your shuttle through. Pull it taut. And there you have it. There's block tatting. And you just adjust as you go. Okay? Adjust everything. With tatting, you always adjust. But that's it. There's block tatting. I hope you enjoyed this video. And try to use this in some of your tatting. Um, it's a neat little trick to add a little depth and dimension to your tatting. And you can add picos. But I will say this. If you go beyond five double stitches on your block, you're going to need stabilizer thread. And I'm going to show in a special tat along how to make these block tatted pieces using stabilizer thread. So that'll be out real soon. Hope that you follow along with it. I hope you make the little special treat that we have. So until next time, happy tatting. Have a great day and thank you.